Hey everybody, thanks for joining us for this edition of our webinars. We are so glad to be able to share the work of our colleague Oleg with you. Um, Oleg has just finished talking at ElixirConf EU virtual to uh, uh, over 100 attendees about th this topic and is a wealth of knowledge on machine learning in general and, and as, as such, it's no surprise to see him doing such great things with Crawley. Um, firstly, a couple of housekeeping things. As always, we will be on Twitter and also um, using the go to chat and question section to take question and answers throughout. I believe Oleg's got something a little bit more interactive planned as well. So please, if you have any questions at any point throughout or when he asks, please participate. It's a friendly environment and we, we really want to help make this as personal to you as possible. Um, secondly, uh, yeah, if, if you do not have questions until the end, please then still get them through because we, we will be happy to help out then. And as always, a recording of this webinar will be sent to you uh, in the week following. So if there's anything you missed that you'd like to see again, check out for your inbox. Um, with all of that said, I'll hand over to Oleg, who will take you through Crawley. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us on tonight's webinar. Uh, today, I'm going to speak uh, about uh, web scrapping in Elixir and in particular as a Crawley uh, framework, which I have built recently. And we will try to make a practical task to see how uh, how the internet can be converted in the data, which can potentially earn some money to you or for you. Uh, so I'm Alek Tarasenko, as uh, Anthony have mentioned, and uh, let me start with a short introduction of myself. So first of all, I came from Ukraine. Currently, I'm working in the Stockholm office of Erlang Solutions. I have five years of experience in Erlang and almost four years of Elixir battle experience. I uh, have joined uh, from the Python world and uh, I was doing web scrapping with Python, especially with a framework called Scrappy. So a lot of my insights, they do arrive uh, from that topic. Uh, as I have mentioned today, we are going to talk about the scrapping. The presentation itself will take something like 45 minutes, so please prepare. and. As uh, Anthony have mentioned, uh, I want to make it uh, in less formal and interactive mode. So if you have questions, I will be happy to answer. So let's make it a conversation. Uh, first of all, uh, let's start with a short definition on what is scrapping. And uh, uh, this will allow us to be on the same page. And this will allow us to understand, understand the same things under uh, the same word. I know that uh, lots of people tend to uh, divide scrapping from crawling and uh, they like explaining these terms separately. I don't like this idea because I think that scrapping and crawling are complementary technologies and it's hard to imagine one without another. And I would formulate the meaning of scrapping as uh, a way for you to convert, uh, convert the internet to your database and then potentially to use this information uh, for your profits. So now, as soon as we have defined the scrapping, let's discuss a bit about the areas of usage, who and why uh, uses uh, web scrapping. So first of all, uh, well, maybe you can guess who is uh, the largest uh, user. Well. I cannot uh, hear a lot of uh, uh, answers, but otherwise you can guess from the first line of, of this slide is that the biggest users are search engines. Uh, search engines, they tend to uh, produce uh, meaningful results from uh, for your search requests. And uh, they are doing it uh, asynchronously in the way that the information you are trying to find is actually uh, being extracted beforehand and being populated to their enormously large index. Uh, back in 2016, Google have reported that uh, the size of their index is way more than 100 pentabytes. 
which is a number and you can imagine uh, how many uh, how many search requests uh, are being done through Google and how big this database is. Uh, another area of usage of web scrapping lays in the online marketing and different agencies who are doing the online marketing. Uh, these people are advertising some businesses, some internet shops over the internet and they are trying to um, to improve the rankings in the search results and in order to improve the rankings of anyone you need to have some uh, performance indicators to measure uh, the activities you are doing to understand if you are doing something good or bad and uh, in order to, to do that people would extract the data from the search results uh, itself so it's uh, a bit ironical uh, from one side search engines they do extract the data from the entire web and agencies they would extract data from search engines themselves so there is something like a chain also a third area of usage is e-commerce e-commerce projects uh, projects like amazon ebay or oilx uh, they would uh, build uh, a lot of uh, insightful tools based on the information uh, they could extract on the web uh, some services are building something like a price comparison tools uh, and uh, they would uh, extract the data from different web shops and would propose you the best price for, for, for the given uh, product. Another area of usage is machine learning and uh, from my point of view it's hard to underestimate the meaning of data there. Basically good data can help you uh, to train a good model especially taking into account that uh, a lot of uh, good uh, software libraries are currently available for example we had an experience building uh, deep neural networks uh, with the help of, of python packages available uh, and made by google and basically the uh, thing is that it's not hard to build uh, hundreds layers of, of the neural network. However, it's extremely hard to find the data sets which would allow you to train them properly and to test them properly and to adjust uh, the bottlenecks properly. So basically, uh, a key factor for machine learning is data. And in order to get good data, sometimes you just need to extract it from the web. Uh, Another area which I want to highlight today, partially because of the second part, because of the practical part, is human resources, HR. Uh, yeah, people are kind of hiring uh, other people and uh, uh, probably most of you uh, are getting lots of emails with job offers and uh, some some kind of good uh, monies uh, are offered to you but uh, did you ever thought uh, how this data about you or about uh, available jobs are uh, being collected and and uh, how it's being extracted it is it is clear that it's not po possible to monitor like dozens of the sites to just ping someone if a new job appears in the market so it's done with the help of the web scrapping. The next point is uh, political researches. Uh, well, in, in, this is a relatively new area, which, however, have already uh, like stated the importance. Uh, I know that uh, in recent elections uh, worldwide, uh, web scrapping was used quite heavily in order to understand uh, what kind of uh, data internet has and uh, how the activities on social networks influence uh, given candidates uh, and also it allowed people to understand uh, who is the influencer and, uh, and and how to approach the influencers of of a wide masses of people so it's an interesting area relatively new but uh, on the other hand it has uh, tremendously hard high budgets so it's possible to earn money there as well Okay, now as well as we have discussed the areas of usage, let's quickly discuss the challenges, uh, why it is complex uh, task and what, what are the complexities there. So first of all, let's discuss the scaling, the scalability problem. Uh, well, uh, as I have mentioned, for example, back in 2016, uh, Google's 
yeah, four years ago, Google index uh, was a way more than 500 pentabytes. And the question is, how would you make it up to date? How would you uh, make sure that uh, you are not outdated? Yeah, it means that you have to run massively concurrent uh, data extractions from various locations. So you should run your crawlers in non-stop mode. And uh, the second aspect here is that imagine uh, what kind of hardware you would need and imagine that the software there should also be uh, quite good in terms of utilizing that hardware. So scaling is a problem here. The second problem, just as it's stated here, the data extraction. So uh, yeah, the modern web is uh, getting towards uh, interactivity. A lot of content is rendered by the JavaScript and the JavaScript, it's not a secret, it's extremely hard to uh, extract the data which is after rendered. Most of the tools would just get the page before the JavaScript comes in. And I know that Google have reported that they have done a lot of work in order to extract the JavaScript content, for example, to kind of put it to their indexes. However, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that uh, it is uh, kind of done properly. Uh, and a lot of JavaScript content is not uh, available in the, uh, in the search indexes. And imagine that you are building a price comparison service and something you need to extract is uh, rendered by the JavaScript. I would say that most of the uh, currently available libraries, they wouldn't even mention this problem. So they would state that, okay, you can extract the data with the help of our, our uh, fancy library. But when it comes to the JavaScript, they will be silent. No one will advise you anything. Uh, well, another topic I want to discuss is politeness. Uh, so it's kind of different from scaling from terms of that you should be really kind of thoughtful about how many uh, requests you are performing to a given website. You should uh, make sure that you are not using your uh, system as uh, a DDoS uh, tool, which brings someone down because uh, this is not the main purpose of the scrapping. And basically if you are going to uh, use scrapping like that, then you should be aware of, of some consequences. So you might, uh, might have problems with the police, for example, or with a hosting provider, uh, which may bring down your architect, your infrastructure. And finally, uh, the problems, uh, like general problems, is that you need to deal with the network. Uh, web scrapping and internet uh, relies on the network, which is quite clear. And the uh, network doesn't uh, work uh, properly all the time. You will get uh, situations like downtimes, some unexpected errors, some timeouts. So your system should support retries, for example. Uh, sometimes people wouldn't want you to extract the data, so you would need to support CAPTCHAs or proxies to overcome the bands. So basically those are the challenges. Uh, let's move forward. Uh, yeah, let's let's uh, discuss the ethical aspects a bit. Uh, so as I have mentioned, uh, and as well as today we are going to have a practical part, I wanted to uh, state it a bit more like uh, strictly that it's important to be polite. It's important to, for example, respect the um, content of robots.txt. So you are not uh, going to the pages which are not uh, kind of uh, supposed to be visited according to the website owner. Uh, sometimes you still have to do that and uh, a good framework should allow doing that. However, in that case, it's better to limit the concurrency and it's better to be invisible. Uh, a polite crawler never uh, brings down a website. So you should be really kind of accurate. If you are seeing a performance degradation, you should kind of slow down and you should be meaningful. You should kind of pick up a good concurrency. Uh, most of the times you are not going to extract data from Amazon. So you should kind of pick up the number of requests in, 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 in some amount that which will not bring people down. And 
Otherwise, also it's a good tone to uh, specify the contact information uh, somehow so people can reach you out and they can uh, like contact you in, in, in case of problems. For example, if you are bringing some, someone down and sometimes you don't know it, then they contact you and you can fix the problem even before they will try to contact uh, the, web the like hardware owner or before they will try to contact the police. So now we have covered the ethical aspects and now let's discuss uh, what is being used on the market to address the problem of web crawling. So currently there are following tools on, on, on the market. First of all, the command line tools like CURL and WGET. Uh, these tools are C-based, they are extremely fast. However, yeah, they are not really suitable because it's hard to make them very flexible. It's hard to build uh, an extraction infrastructure based on, on them. Uh, and uh, they are not capable for extracting JavaScript, at least without some like extremely complex magic. Uh, another set of, of solutions is uh, something like Python plus Beautiful Soap and Selenium. Or we can uh, also describe it from the uh, from the Elixir point of view. It's something Floki plus whatever, and uh, and and that's it. So if you are browsing the internet, you will find a lot of tutorials how to extract uh, data with the help of Floki, and people are building uh, building crawlers in 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 just one tutorial session. Uh, I, I would say that this approach is extremely nice and, uh, and, and interesting to try and basically uh, you will get some results. However, uh, the problem here is that you have to handle the complexity of the networking yourself. You have to invent everything from the scratch. You have to think how to deal with JavaScript. You need to think how to deal with cookies, how to tweak user agent strings. So, Probably if you are uh, going to turn it into your business, then you would want to rely on something which is built for you or built by you, but uh, not something as, as simple or as purely uh, close to the language. Uh, third option would be to try a, a bulletproof solution like Python and Scrappy. I have said that I have arrived from the Python and Scrappy world, and I would say that uh, it's a quite a mature tool, and uh, it, it is definitely capable for extracting millions of items. And uh, yeah, uh, most of the uh, a large chunk of big companies are using uh, this tool set and uh, using it quite successfully. Uh, personally, I was working with the uh, Scrappy core team. And I know a lot of insights from that world. Uh, I was trying lots of uh, kind of uh, spiders uh, built on the top of Scrappy, and uh, I know strong and weak points of that platform. And uh, probably that's one of the points why I have decided to build Crowley, because from one side we can take uh, very bright ideas from the Python world, from the Scrappy world, and from the other hand we can eliminate the weak points. And I think that the Elixir concurrent model is probably more suitable towards that task, but let's cover it later on. Let's uh, discuss it separately. So during this conversation, we will touch Crowley. We will discuss uh, about Crowley itself. So the introduction, what is Crowley and why you should consider uh, using it? First of all, it's free and open source. So guys, I know that you are all Elixir uh, fans, so I would uh, encourage you to join me and to hack it a bit. And if you can uh, also try to build something based on it, and maybe you can even earn money based on, on, on the work you are doing. And we, we will probably cover this part a bit later today. Uh, it uses Scrappy as a source of inspiration. And again, I think it's smart because you are just uh, taking something which is already built, which is already used to extract millions of items, and you are getting the ideas out of it. And I think that software development uses this approach here and there with, uh, with uh, a great success. So you should really kind of try to reuse good 
ideas and try to make something better or base your work on, on maybe better runtime environment. Uh, finally, it has uh, a lot of features. I, I, I'm calling it like batteries included. Uh, so it will automatically filter duplicates. It will follow the robots.txt by default. It will validate your items or, for example, restrict your crawling within a given domain so your crawl doesn't slip away. Uh, it supports user agent rotations and a lot of other features. Finally, it goes with a unified system of data extractors, uh, which means that uh, in order to build a spider, you wouldn't have to reinvent the wheel. You will uh, build a very, uh, very common code, which uh, will be easily recognizable. Also, it goes with uh, a very good documentation, uh, well, in my humble opinion. And uh, it's easy to start with it. So it's easy to start with a tutorial and we will touch this part later, later on as well. So, yeah, I was trying to explain how, how it looks uh, at a glance. And I came up with a very simplified uh, view of what, what is a crawly process and how it works. So basically, if we are looking on the worker itself, what happens is that for every incoming request, uh, this request will be uh, sent through a pipe of possible request processors. So every request will go through a processor. And once all processor processors have been executed, then what happens is that you are extracting items from this uh, request and then uh, and also extracting requests. Uh, all extracted requests are going to uh, go to the same pipe. They are going to go to processors at the end, and items are going to another pipe of processors, and that's it. So basically, as simple as two pipes. We can think of Crowley as uh, something which works with two pipes. And uh, yeah, let's 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 move forward. Let's see how 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 this can uh, really work out. Uh, another thing, when when I was showing this robot. Uh, basically, I was uh, trying to explain it's like a robot which uh, which knows how to extract the data. And the data is being extracted with the help of the spider. Uh, you will ask, what is a spider? Is it an insect or what? Uh, this uh, term came from the, from the scrappy world again. And the idea here is that spider is uh, like... Uh, like a robot which sits on the web, on the internet, and jumps from one uh, web part to another, like from one link to another. So that's, that's the idea. Uh, from the uh, Elixir point of view, uh, Spider is a behavior which implements uh, three callbacks. Uh, and uh, the first callback uh, explains how to start the crawl, which, 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 what is the starting point. So here I'm, I'm, I'm just showing that you need to start from this set of links. Uh, it sets base URL uh, to restrict the crawl within a given domain. And also it defines the parse item, which extracts the data uh, out of the responses. Uh, and this one is supposed to return requests and items. Requests are going to the uh, pipe uh, here and items are going to the second pipe. Uh, yeah, uh, that was a small theoretical part. I really hope that it was uh, more or less clear. Uh, and uh, Anthony, I just wonder if uh, we have any questions uh, from the audience so far. We've, we've got a few. Um, do you want to take them now? Yeah, probably. Why not? Uh, cool. Um, so the first one is, is it possible to pass and detect what fonts are used on a page? What uh, fonts are used on the page? Yeah. So fonts are basically the, uh, the kind of information which this way or another is inside the, uh, inside the page. So technically, you can extract this information and you can uh, then put this information to, to your database. However, to be honest, in my practice, I've never seen a usage like that. 
So it's more about extracting a structural information, uh, for example, uh, products from uh, an internet shop or uh, tweets from a Twitter or posts from a Facebook or a list of friends. Perfect. Uh, our next question is, can Crowley be used on Erlang projects? Uh, well, potentially, yes. Crowley itself uh, is built with Elixir and you know that uh, there is a possibility to reuse libraries. However, it is standalone, so it's possible to run it uh, separately on uh, on a given environment and it's possible to uh, just uh, direct the data to a given place. And I can uh, show how it's uh, organized currently with uh, one, one of the projects I'm building uh, on, on the top of Crowley. And uh, I, I will slowly, slightly cover the topic. However, uh, I haven't tried to use it with uh, Erlang as it is. Cool. Uh, next question, how is this different from gen underscore state M? Uh, yeah, so it, it is uh, just different because it's uh, not uh, a behavior, it's uh, basically a product uh, which is dedicated to data extraction and uh, yeah, I, I don't see similarities uh, here. However, we can discuss it after, uh, after the, after the uh, conversation, maybe in asynchronous mode. Sure. Um... Any thoughts on scraping members areas of websites? Does Crawly support various authentication methods? Uh, currently Crawly supports uh, like cookies management. So it's possible to, uh, uh, to implement a code which uh, would uh, log in and get the cookie out of the login page. And then with the automatic cookie management, once you are passing to Crawly this cookie, it will be uh, reused in your requests. So technically there is a possibility for that and uh, we have uh, uh, we have done uh, a similar topic when it was required to enter the zip code to the uh, website to get localized content and uh, in order to get this zip code we had to perform a special request to get the corresponding cookie. Uh, so the login topic is quite similar. However, on practice, I didn't have the login problem, but I have I had the zip codes problem. And uh, yeah, I think it's similar and it's possible to solve it with with the help of the cookie management uh, subsystem. Perfect. Um, does Crawly support requests via proxy? Yes, uh, that's one of the. Uh, uh, key points uh, and it was added uh, almost from the very beginning. It supports proxies, uh, automatic user agents rotations and uh, retries uh, when, when it comes to like let's say robustness. Um, there is one nice one here that says no question just letting you know it's a fantastic presentation so far. Oh uh, thank you. <laughs> And then the last question, which I think leads in quite well to what you have prepared for the rest of the presentation is, can we see an example? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the topic of the, of the practical part. So uh, um, now I'm going to jump to the practical part. And um, uh, when, 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 when you are dealing with the web, there is some sort of uncertainty. Uh, from one side, I could have recorded a video and I could just show the video and uh, sit and rest. But instead, I decided to suffer and uh, write the code together with you. And uh, basically, the idea here is that, uh, excuse me, someone have switched my light. Let me let me switch it back just a second. OK, I cannot simply switch it back, but in any case, let, let me continue. Uh, yeah, so uh, basically I decided to uh, to do a live presentation. So in this part, we will build something real, something practical. And um, yeah, sometimes people are going to extract recipes or they are going to extract whatever, uh, which doesn't have a lot of uh, potential, doesn't have a lot of uh, uh, kind of uh, usage. 
what we are going to try, we are going to extract uh, something which can be potentially converted into money. Uh, so uh, when, when I was making the theoretical part of the presentation, I have uh, touched the part of HR. Uh, you know how this market works is that there are some like freelance marketing agents uh, or HR agents who are going to find jobs for people and then they are going to find people for those jobs. Once they are linking these two parties together, then what happens is that uh, yeah, they, they are uh, uh, organizing a set of interviews and then uh, if the person is successfully uh, working somewhere then they are getting some part of their salary for some amount of time. And uh, this became quite a profitable area recently. So uh, I, 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 I knew that uh, like everyone started to become an HR agent. Uh, because it was so profitable. So uh, in this tutorial, we will try to build a part of this business, and uh, we will we will try to uh, extract the data from the Elixir radar, and we will try to get a database of jobs. So if you are a freelance uh, uh, a freelance HR, then what would happen is that you will have a system which will uh, be which will automatically give you new jobs in the Elixir system. And once you will be able to extract the people who are doing the Elixir, then you can organize something like a campaign to contact the right people for the right job. For the right job. You can even add some machine learning and you can try to find best matches for, for this job. Um, just two aspects. I know that some, some of you might be annoyed with uh, HRs. Again, this is just a tutorial project and uh, uh, please be, don't, 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 uh, don't, don't be uh, kind of, uh, don't understand me incorrectly. People are extracting this data. We are not first one who are doing that. We are not the last one. So let's, let's just keep going. And uh, the second aspect is that as soon as we are on the web, there is some possibility for a failure. So potentially it might be the case that we will not be able to, to do that work today. But let's give it a try and let's see what will happen. So hopefully we can start. Anthony, any objections? Okay. No, just a reminder, maybe switch your camera off for the live coding part so that the code is expanded and visible. Yeah, yeah, sure. So when, when I was speaking about uh, about Crawly itself, I said that one of the key points of Crawly is documentation and I have done it on purpose because uh, yeah, it, it just has a very good documentation and you can start, uh, you can easily start uh, your uh, work with, with the help of this documentation. And I don't want to write the code just out of, of the paper and just don't want to do it in this manual way in my uh, uh, editor. So I will use the documentation in front of you and uh, Anthony, if we will have a questions on the go, please don't hesitate to ask them. I, I will be glad to answer. So first of all, um, what we need to do, we need to uh, start the new Elixir project. Uh, I'm normally doing it with this uh, supervisor flag and we will call it something like HR stars. Uh, well, let's let's assume we are going to be HR stars. Stars. And once once it's done, let me open my uh, my text editor of of, of choice. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's 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 uh, do the magical part. So first of all, uh, what we need to do, we need to uh, we need to add Crawly and Floki to the list of dependencies. So um, Crawly itself uh, doesn't need any uh, any specific uh, data uh, parser. So it's not important whether you are uh, extracting data with the help of Floki or for example, with the help of Misix. Uh, basically, I was using both of them with uh, good results, and I would say that uh, it's more important to concentrate on your business goals and uh, and choose the right uh, tool for your job. And sometimes uh, also I had to parse non-HTML results, and in this case I, I came up with something very custom. So Crawl 
itself doesn't make any assumptions about who is going to parse what. And once you have added this to the list of your dependencies, uh, we can do mix depths get in order to fetch everything. Uh, I'll currently with this in fetched, so we are ready to go. And basically that's that's it. Uh, on, on, on that part my presentation ends, so we are on this kind of free area of, of uh, possibilities and uh, potential failures. However, I have something uh, which can help me and I wanted to advertise it because uh, from one side, yeah, I'm just reading the documentation, but yeah, look, we have a documentation. <laughs> That's a good point here. So we have uh, something to use and uh, we have something to get started. So let's let's just do that. Let let me uh, copy some part. Uh, so first of all, once we've got everything, it's time to define our spider. So as I have said, spider is an extractor module. Uh, I will, for for the sake of the tutorial purposes, I will add it directly to the uh, like root folder of of the application. So let's let's call it. Uh, or maybe just radar. radar. While you're doing this, Oleg, um, our first question has come through, which is, what are the usual impediments or difficulties when scraping Google search results with Crawly? Uh, yeah, uh, normally you need to restrict uh, the amount of, uh, uh, of requests uh, quite heavily. Uh, what uh, our practical uh, results have shown is that you shouldn't make more than 100 uh, requests per minute in order to avoid being banned. And also it's good to use uh, some uh, proxy rotation tools in order to avoid making a high volume of uh, requests from uh, one location. Yeah, uh, just, just to touch it a little bit, uh, what uh, what we are going to extract today? What what is our target? Uh, we are going to look on Elixir Radar, uh, and the idea is that uh, we are going to extract the jobs from from this website. Um, it's just uh, literally a normal aggregator of jobs, and uh, uh, we we are going to extract the information which would allow us to understand what is on the market right now. So uh, yeah. Let's let's get started. Uh, now we have defined this uh, basic uh, file, and uh, I would just copy the uh, content of uh, of the tutorial, but we'll adjust it to our needs to speed up things. So when it comes to the base URL, we will use the uh, Elixir Radar. Yeah. Okay, done. And when it comes to the starting point, we are going to start from the jobs. Okay, so basically that's it. And uh, I think that is the main uh, part. So let's uh, see what what tutorial suggests uh, us, what, what should we do. It suggests us to start the shell and to start uh, extracting something. So let's try it. Okay, you never know what will be the outcome. Uh, Anthony, any other questions? Uh, is it possible to query for tags and elements on a page in a dynamic way? I mean, based on something that we already get, can we change the elements that the spider is fetching? Uh, yeah, potentially, yes. Um, you can uh, adjust your uh, item extractor, and I will touch this point a bit uh, more uh, during this presentation. So, in order to start uh, a job, uh, what we need to do, we need to uh, execute the following command, and we need to supply it with the spider name. And currently, spiders are referenced by the module names. So, as soon as this module is uh, in your uh, uh, scope, you should be able to start it. And what you can see now is that uh, we have started a spider uh, with four jobs and uh, uh, well, not four jobs, but four workers. And these workers are uh, trying to, to, to fetch the data. 
uh, well, uh, we will wait a bit and uh, then we will see how, how it fails. So, in general, uh, as soon as we didn't, didn't add any code, uh, we have no possibility to, uh, to, to get any data out of it. Uh, so, uh, we have just kind of uh, made this pure dry run without any results. So let's see what can be done in order to get uh, the real data extracted. Uh, just to add that crawl itself has several measures to stop inefficient crawls. That idea is taken from uh, from Scrappy itself. You can see that uh, the current crawl speed is zero items per minute. And as soon as uh, we are not extracting some minimum uh, amount of items, like minimum required amount of items, uh, the job is automatically stopped. Uh, it allows you to avoid the situations when you have some process in, in, in your system which is just hanging forever and uh, doesn't give you any results. And also it allows you to hook some, some sort of actions. If something like this happens, you can notify uh, something and for example, get an email because you know web is changing and potentially you might get uh, the changes. So yeah it 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 will be uh, required to modify your spider in order to extract the data so first of all uh now we have a response uh yeah now we are going to talk about the most important part uh the parse item callback as i have explained this is uh the main uh, flash of crowley uh this callback is used in order to extract the data from from a response so once you are sending the request you are getting a response back and this response contains the data itself so it's it's important to get the data and again i will probably start with uh, with the uh, data which uh, which is uh, provided by the tutorial however uh, what what i would do i would uh, use the uh, elixir shell in order to understand how the data looks like so the Crowley uh, has uh, the fetch uh, function, which allows you to fetch a given page. And uh, yeah, let's let's try to fetch it. So we have the response now, and uh, that's that's how a response uh, looks like. And uh, now we can start parsing it. We can start uh, trying to understand uh, how it looks like and what is inside. Uh, in order to parse things, uh, what you have to do, you have to also inspect uh, your web page and you have to try to see what kind of uh, selectors are, are available. And I like Radar because uh, they are using uh, this uh, semantic styling, so it's uh, easy to understand what, what's going on and uh, uh, what is here and there. So you can see that uh, a job entry has the class job board uh, job and inside that class you have elements with title you have elements with uh, location and elements with description so that's that's our uh, that's our information which we can easily use okay so in order to to start uh, moving forward what we will do we will first of all use the parse document so we will uh, we will parse a document Yeah, hopefully it will be successful. Okay, now we have like a parsing results. So let's first of all try to get the data out of it, and let's let's see uh, if we can get the uh, the items block, for example, this one. Uh, yeah. So I will copy the uh, class name and what we will do now is, uh, yeah, let's jump to the terminal, document, then uh, floki, floki find, and then, uh, well, let's, let's just try to find it by the class name. And uh, yeah, so what, what, what we have here is that we have a list of, of, of these entries. So that's, that's uh, something we can start with. 
So uh, let let me save it to job uh, board. Well, maybe we can call it a job blocks. Job blocks. Okay, so now we have job blocks and uh, potentially we need to dive deeper because we have like a list and we need to extract that list one by one. So uh, let's let's try to get one of them. So uh, job blocks block one. Yeah, so that's that's our first block and. Uh, uh, this one contains the real uh, data and the idea which I'm trying to uh, implement right now would look like I would want to build a function which uh, takes one block and extracts the structured content out of it and uh, then I will just uh, iterate through all these items and will extract everything one by one. Uh, let's uh, see how it can be implemented. So first of all, we need to understand. Uh, yeah, first of all, let's let's define this function. So this parse item block will take a block and will uh, return uh, return a map with the required data. And uh, here a function will just call this uh, parse item block function with a block element. So uh, let's let's see how to extract the title out of out of this all. So title is something like uh, block uh, one and then then let's see how it's described. So the type title is uh, a P element with a class job board job title. So uh, yeah, let's let's use the same trick. Loki uh, find okay job board job title. Okay, here we here we go. Yeah, we we we, we can see something, right? Uh, it's not uh, not uh, a text. It's more like a structure, internal structure of uh, the data in Floki. However, we can convert it to text. Uh, yeah, Floki text. So basically, that's that's the first information, the title out of, of out of the first block. And let's let's just store it. So when when we we can jump to this uh, function which we have defined, and we can say that title is um, is is a block. Uh, and and then some some like sort of selectors applied to it. Uh, the next thing we which we would want to extract is uh, well probably the location of uh, of of the job. So let's do location and yeah let's let's see how how location is being defined. So location is here and we can do inspect. So yeah, we also have this uh, class attribute, so we can reuse the same approach. And the only thing we have to modify is the location. Uh, th this approach, um, I I'm normally using the console in order to uh, get uh, get the information out of uh, out of the site, just to test everything interactively before even uh, trying to run your spider. So let's extract the location and. Uh, yeah, I think that for the purposes of this tutorial, uh, and especially taking into account that it takes a bit longer than I have uh, expected originally, I would just expect that we are extracting just two two things out of our blocks, just a title and location. Sorry for that. Originally, I also thought about URLs and descriptions, but I will leave it to the audience. Okay, so. Uh, one yep. thing I like, um, we just had one request to bump up the font, if you can. Yeah. Uh, can I? <laughs> just uh, a second. You, I think if you zoom your screen, that should. I am not quite sure how to do it. Uh, right, right now, during the presentation, nothing, nothing really works for me. I'm trying okay. to increase the font. Uh, font. Uh, yeah. 
yeah as, as, as it usually happens during the demo uh yeah uh, for for some reason any, any sort of zooming doesn't uh, really work for me uh, and okay. i don't know I, why <laughs> i have a workaround that may work for people i oh, will post okay. oh. Oh, there no you. no it, yeah uh Perfect. sorry guys yeah so uh, basically what what i'm doing now i'm just copying the content of of the uh, first uh, uh, of, of the first comments uh, which I did in the uh, in, in, in the console, and uh, with this uh, with the help of of uh, these comments, I'm uh, I, I, I'm just moving forward in in, in the spider. So uh, we we have the code which extracts blocks as well. Let me get it. Yeah. So here we have blocks. Okay, so uh, now we need to get items. Items is a call uh, to. Uh, so what we will do? We will uh, go through the blocks as I have uh, suggested originally, and then we will uh, just call this parse uh, item block and. Uh, yeah, it's a function which takes just one argument as, as defined here, uh, but it should return a list of items. Uh, well, just an item and uh, let, let me wrap it into a map uh, as it's the expected uh, result of, of this function. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now it's done, uh, but uh, I'm not sure if uh, I have not made a mistake here. Let me check. Um, yeah, so uh, just a second. Okay, so maybe I have made a syntax error somewhere. We will find it out right now. Just a second, I think uh, we will be able to do that. Uh, well, maybe the interpreter will help us. Uh, but otherwise, I don't see where it can be. Uh, and right now, let me rerun everything and let's see the... Uh, syntax error before the location. Okay, obviously we need to have a comma here. Uh, and now we can format everything. Uh, okay, let's do the magical formatting call. Uh, okay, so uh, with with the help of this command, what, we, what have happened is that we have got uh, like items and what we need to do now, we need to return them as a result of the uh, parse item call. So this allows us to uh, to extract some items out of this job. And uh, at this point, we can uh, try to restart the spider and we can try to see if it can work. Uh, so uh, probably uh, not fetch, just a second, excuse me. Crawl. And Yeah, so now we have started uh, started the job, and uh, let's uh, see how it looks like in the other part of of the uh, terminal. Yeah, for now it doesn't give any sort of results because we haven't defined how our items structure is supposed to look like, and that's uh, an important point. Uh, again, in order to do that, let's jump back to the tutorial, uh, what it states. So now we have defined the uh, the uh, spider code, the initial parts which are extracting just uh, uh, just uh, some items out of the radar. 
Uh, and now what we need to define, we need to define the config. And the uh, uh, configuration part is done in the config uh, file. So let's, uh, let me try to define it. So then, okay, not module, but it should be a folder. Okay, and in this config file, I'm going to uh, just define the pipelines which are going to be used. And uh, when, when I was uh, originally explaining how Crowley works, I have uh, explained that uh, it expects you that you are going to define some pipelines uh, to process items uh, like one by one. And uh, the idea here is that uh, you uh, need to uh, write your items to a file in order to have them in a file. So basically uh, here the pipeline would take an item which you have returned from the Crowley and will encode it to the JSON and then would write it to a file in the JSON format to a given folder. And uh, the idea here is that uh, it is uh, a good idea to, and the idea here is that it's quite customizable because you don't have to stick to a given format and uh, you can encode it to CSV by just uh, plugging it another like processor in this pipeline. So uh, one, of, one of the applied usages is that uh, in, in one of the projects I'm sending data to Amazon uh, bucket. On another project I'm sending the data to the UI uh, tool for, for Crowley. Uh, well, uh, basically, uh, you can see from the run is uh, the fact that uh, uh, Crowley is uh, extracting data with the speed of 15 items per minute, uh, which is probably a restriction which uh, applied to the fact that uh, we have only 15 items on the first page of, of Elixir Radar and our spider is not uh, jumping from one link to another because we haven't uh, defined uh, requests here. In, in, in the request block. Uh, unfortunately, I will not be able to showcase how to extract requests yet. However, I will direct you where to find this information. Otherwise, with the configuration uh, defined, we can restart the start. Uh, we can restart the uh, job, and we can uh, we can get the data stored in the file system. Uh, it will take a bit of time, so uh, let me jump to slightly different topic. Uh, to maybe wrap up here and to showcase the data later on. So uh, during this tutorial, we have tried to build a practical example of uh, of how to get the data from the job advertisement website. Uh, yeah, uh, the uh, time limits are quite strict, so I was not able to extract everything out of it. However, uh, what I wanted to showcase is that uh, I have a project uh, which allows you to kind of see the data already extracted. So uh, this one is a Crowley UI, the user interface for Crowley, which is also an open source tool and uh, which can uh, run on the top of Crowley. And it ha has the uh, Elixir Radar uh, scraper already built for you. Uh, I'm using one of the pipelines to uh, send the data to this external user interface node and uh, it allows you to uh, get the data in the dashboard and see the data extracted. So you can see uh, w w what, is, uh, what data looks like, how it looks like. And it allows you not only to see the items or for example to filter items, for example we can try to filter by look location and then uh, well Estonia just to see uh, what what we have in Estonia yeah no, no, not a lot of uh, opportunities for elixir jobs but it allows you to understand how your data looks like and it allows you to understand uh, to, to browse your data and to understand the quality of the data kind of to turn the data into a uh, into a business process for example organizing like quality assurance of the data or, or other aspects. Uh, yeah, and also uh, here I, I, I was trying to showcase how this uh, might look like on production. However, 
yeah, it looks like that uh, it's not possible to uh, load this uh, page inside uh, the iframe. E so unfortunately, this part is not that verbose. And one of one of the possibility here is to just schedule a new spider. I see some of you have uh, already tried it, so uh, it will start extracting the data, and uh, you will be able to see the data in in production. For example, one one of the previous jobs, uh, yeah, I'm I'm just willing to showcase this feature. One of the previous jobs, uh, which is extracting the data from Walmart, uh, yeah, shows the C frame and you can then compare the data uh, with the actual website to understand if it's correct or not. Here you can see that the price has changed quite a bit, uh, which is another, which is just another idea for building a service uh, for like price changes comparison. Like, is it cheaper to buy something on the Black Friday or not? So you can you can do something like that to get the historical information. Okay, guys, uh, I just want to wrap up. Uh, sorry uh, for some sort of uh, unfinished part uh, related to the jobs. Uh, however, I hope it was verbose. The uh, spider itself, uh, which uh, is responsible for extracting jobs from Elixir Radar, is available on the Crowley UI project in the examples folder. You can see how the Final uh, final result will uh, look like uh, in my GitHub repository, and uh, I hope it was interesting for you. And I hope that uh, uh, you will be able to build something on the top of it, and ideally turn something on the top of it. Uh, thanks for listening, uh, and uh, I hope we have a bit of time for a Q and A session. Uh, Anthony, what what do you think? Absolutely. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. Let's do do some Q and A. Uh, so I'll I'll just start by again, thank you, Oleg. That was really fantastic, and we've had a bunch of really positive feedback come through in the chat. Um, but let's get into the questions before we wrap up. Uh, the first one is: Are there plans to update the Poison version required? Um, and then I can chat you if you need an an error message that is coming up when they're trying to use poison version 4.1 uh yeah for now uh, it is uh, not planned yet however uh, we will uh, we are working based on the reported issues uh, on our github so basically we will update it once it will be reported by someone perfect um the next one is what about scraping single page applications which load content layers by ajax um for example spars yeah uh, that's that's one of the concerns which we were trying to address and i have an article published recently and uh, this is an article about using scrappy for rendering the dynamic pages uh, so currently our answer is to use uh, scrappy with the help of a splash fetcher the splash is a fetcher which allows you to uh, get rendered uh, JavaScript data with the help of browser. So in general, we are uh, we are addressing the problem of uh, of of dynamic content with the help of uh, of browser renderer. Cool. And we um, and we have examples. Perfect. Uh... Is there any instrument in Crawly to schedule crawling on a specific page to, uh, with time specified, for example, once per day? So uh, the Crawly itself uh, is not making uh, any uh, any steps toward it, towards it, uh, and uh, the idea is that it's not going to do it. So Crawly itself uh, is just like a tool for uh, scrapping. And our answer to this concern is this Crawly UI, uh, which has schedule spider, which allows you to run a spider on an external node. And we plan to extend it with, uh, with settings like uh, the concurrency, the preferred user agents, and, and other things. So uh, the idea is that I want to make it uh, from the UI, not from the, uh, from the, Scrap itself. So if you want
do it in the command line, probably try to wire it with uh, cron uh, type uh, things. But uh, I lean towards this Crawl UI project. Perfect. Um, is there a hosted version of Crawly? Uh, hosted uh, probably only here uh, on, on, on this uh, website. Uh, it, uh, it is a version of Crawly UI, but it has a Crawly node uh, attached to it. Everything here is running on inside a Docker container on Amazon micro instance, like from a free tire. And uh, it was running without downtimes for uh, more than a month already. And also, if we will look on the jobs here, it was uh, extracting like uh, hundred thousands, uh, well, yeah, hundred thousands of items in the past without any any downsides. So you can play with it here uh, with this limited amount of spiders, or you can check out the Crawler UI project and you can try to run examples from it. Uh, yeah, so that's that's probably the only uh, only hosted version of Crawly I have so far. Perfect. Um, is it possible to write to the database? Uh, yeah, that's what we are doing in this Crawl UI, and uh, that's um, uh, I, I have an experimental um, an experimental uh, uh, items pipeline which is uh, directing the data to this. Um, uh, just let me show it, which is directing the data to uh, the. Uh, well, to a given location. So uh, when, when I'm opening the pipelines code, we have the experimental folder and send to UI folder. So the idea is that this code is getting an item and just sends it to an arbitrary location, which might be a database. And in this particular case, it's a database, but on external node. And the idea here is that uh, you can uh, send your item to whatever place you want. You can send your request to whatever place you want. The idea is that we want to make Crawly extremely extendable, so it's possible to uh, perform different types of saving the data, not only saving to a file system, but saving in terms of sa saving somewhere on FTP. Not only saving request as saving in memory, but saving request somewhere in the database that it's possible not to kind of fetch that request again and again. It's possible just to eat this request from an external location. So we were experimenting with it and you can really send it to the database with the help of the UI. And that's that, that's what happens here. It's a database just inside the crawl UI, uh, which uh, can accept uh, a, a, any type of, uh, of uh, data. Perfect. Um, next one, I'll combine a couple of questions. Um, so does Crawly have any features that other scrapers such as Beautiful Soup or Scrappy do not have? And secondly, what are there any new features you're intending to add to Crawly in the near future? Yeah. So uh, first of all, uh, Beautiful Soap is not uh, a web scrapper. It is, uh, it is a library for extracting the data like a Floki. Uh, and uh, Crawl itself is more like a platform for doing the data extraction and working with the uh, with the networking part. So uh, Crawl can use any pluggable parser in order to uh, convert the uh, response which was fetched from the web into the uh, data, into the structured data. It uh, solves the problems, the networking problems like uh, retries, uh, like uh, filtering out duplicated uh, requests or items in order to avoid fetching same item again and again. But it's uh, not dedicated to extracting the data. We are even not touching the problem of extracting data. Scrawly does know nothing about data extraction. You are just adding Floki to dependencies and extracting it, that's it. Uh, with the help of Floki, but you can use whatever you want. You can use any faster alternatives if you want. The second question regarding features which uh, which uh, it has, but other uh, other tools like Scrappy doesn't. First of all, Scrappy is uh, an probably industry standard which has been developed for years already. We are way younger, so we are in the catching up mode. But I would say that Scrappy doesn't have the UI 
which we have already and our UI is uh, I, I hope it is quite stable and uh, uh, at least I have tested it and uh, I, I'm quite happy about what I'm currently seeing so as I know they are not making steps towards the UI and also we are built on the uh, on the uh, Elixir runtime which is uh, uh, which is, I believe, better than Python runtime, but that's subjective uh, question. Regarding the features, yeah, we have uh, ambitious plans, and uh, for now, uh, we are uh, working towards two directions. So first of all, a lot of uh, frameworks are stating that they are extremely fast. For example, I was reading the source code of another Elixir uh, scrapping for framework, and they are saying that they are very fast just because they built on the top of the gen stage. Uh, Scrap is also like tending to say that they are very fast. What we are building right now, we are building a benchmarking, which would allow us to understand how many requests we can potentially reach on a given platform, on a given hardware. So that's one direction, one, one, one goal to achieve. The second thing is that we plan to invest into the crawl UI. We want to add extra options like schedule in a given time with given parameters. And our uh, biggest winning point would be uh, something like a dynamic spiders generation. So the idea which I want to achieve, I want to have a platform which allows you to define a spider without really writing the extractor code. Because if you are going to look on this, uh, on this uh, like data extraction code, uh, which, which for example, we have created here, you will see that it's quite common. And uh, what I want to have, I want to be able to define it with the help of uh, Elixir uh, DSL. That's one of the reasons why I want to kind of, why I decided to do it on the top of Elixir. So I want to be able to define the parse items with just help of uh, DSL. And I want to make it in the UI so it's possible to define spiders without defining spiders. And another big feature we are uh, we are designing right now is a possibility to run uh, uh, crawls on multiple nodes and to orchestrate these crawls on across the multiple nodes. Uh, it's a long path to travel there. However, we are making short steps. And when I'm looking on the on on, on the actual roadmap, which was presented back in uh, November 2019, I would say that we have implemented most of the features. So we are moving towards uh, this direction slowly, but uh, the results are are promising. <laughs> Hopefully it answers the question. Perfect. Yeah, uh, they already replied saying they were greatly appreciated the detailed answer. So you are doing a great job, mate. Um, next question. Where can we find the repository for the Elixir Radar example? Yeah, it's uh, in this uh, Crowley UI project. So uh, there is uh, Crowley UI, and it is in in the examples in the example folder. Uh, yeah, Anthony, you would probably have to share it uh, with the people. I will send you the link later on. Perfect. Um, how does Crowley deal with pagination? Yeah, you have to do it yourself. Uh, basically, the uh, part which I haven't uh, possibility to showcase, but uh, that's how the pagination is done in the uh, in the radar example. So, for example, here we are extracting hrefs attributes, and then we are converting them to the URLs uh, to the requests. And it's important to work with requests because request is something more than URL, as uh, you know, because a request would also mean uh, a wide range of headers. And when it comes to headers, uh, Crowley does a lot of things like rotation, like cookies management and other things. So basically, uh, you have to do it yourself, but uh, that's, uh, th th that is what makes uh, it flexible. So. Uh, the parse item is expected to return items and requests. Request is the second part. Perfect. And one last question before we wrap up. Any plan to use Puppeteer versus Splash? Yeah, we, uh, we, we, were, we were approaching this milestone of uh, having browser renderers. I am 
I'm using Splash because I came from Scrapping Hub, the company which built Scrappy, and uh, I kind of knew a lot of uh, insides and outsides of, of, of it, and I took Splash because it is faster, but uh, not faster, but it's faster to build something on the top of it. However, I'm more than aware of all the downsides of it, and I understand that uh, it's not like uh, a solution to every problem, uh, not at all. Uh, however, it allowed us to solve most of the uh, concerns we had at uh, Scrapping Hub, and uh, the scrapping was done with a the scale there. Uh, and uh, personally, I'm leaning towards not Puppeteer, but uh, some uh, headless browsers uh, like, like Headless Chrome. And I was uh, looking on Elixir implementations of, of the API there. However, uh, however, then I decided that it's better to build something uh, which will make us better than uh, Scrappy than just to catch up after them trying to re-implement all the features they have. So that's why now we are doing the UI. Uh, but if someone wants to contribute, I'm more than welcome to I, I'm more than happy to to assist, and I'm more than happy to help and to inject it because that's that's one of the things I want to have inside the project. Perfect. Thank you so much, Oleg. Thank you, everybody who attended. I think um, I speak for everyone, and with the uh, benefit of a wealth of feedback here that is saying thank you, uh, I think it's safe to say everybody has enjoyed this and found it really useful. Um, we will include links to everything that, that was mentioned today in the follow-up email with the recording. So please uh, keep an eye out on the recording in your inbox. Um, thanks all for your time and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Bye.